I've, I've got all the recorders going now, video and that. And w- if he really needs to know, we can tell him after the show. Or... <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> if he really needs to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, we're quarantined, though, so you don't have to worry about him stopping by for a month or two. So. <laughs> My sister-in-law lives on a sailboat. She could just come by. Yeah, freeze on by. A lot of people do. <laughs> Fishermen and stalkers and all of <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Will knows that's not even a joke. I wish it was a joke. Are they fishermen stalkers? Or like, is it the same person? I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they use our snook light, and they just hang out right there. They <laughs> Catch come by. They come by in their trawler. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Giant fishing trawler, just hanging out. And then I, you hear the dolphins like breathing. You hear the dolphins gasping for breath. It's so amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. I might have to like, if I hear them, I might have to let you listen because so that's cool. crazy. I grew up surfing. I grew up in Virginia Beach and Nags Head and Porpoise nice. all over the place. And yeah, I, I, I can handle some of that. You grew up in a cool spot, but you just can't get that damn shipping right. I can't get the ship. No, not at all. It's that and between that and accounting. Yeah, I, I'm not an accountant, nor do I want to be, nor do I want to play one on TV. Like, I don't want to be anywhere near it. So, so let's go ahead and kick this off. We'll have some of this pre-show on there. I don't know how much. We hinted at it, I believe, in the Adam Martin episode, and those that listened kind of made the announcement that Will had a big announcement coming up, and we would have Courtney Hansen on the show to kind of explain Will's big announcement. Uh, she's kind of, she's part of it. We won't get into too much. I'm going to keep my intro short. We'll say hi to Will and Courtney, and hey. I'm going to turn it up. We'll get the big thing. Should we get the big thing out of the way or should we chat just a little bit and then go to the big? (laughs) We probably should. We should probably in in the whole scheme of this to keep a listener in for 15 minutes for podcast ratings and listens. We should probably wait a minute or two. (laughs) (laughs) We're we're going to stealth it. What I told the guys before the show is we've been doing this for a while. And I've taken it a little bit more professionally, so I've started to do a little pre-research on the guests. You disappeared in 2014, 2015 from the internet, it seems. You know, there's a lot of interviews from you from 14, 15, even your Wikipedia ends at about 15. Now, for some reason, I see you on the periphery every now and then. <laughs> what have you done? You, we know, you know, the overhaul and we know the power block and, and that. After that, and the book and the, the and there's yeah there's all kinds of what are the last four years like because you've kind of as some of my friends would say become smart and moved to the correct side of the cameras <laughs> and, and started a little bit of production in that is that not right yeah i mean i'm still on the other side too i, I just realized that like you know at a certain point i'm not going to be able to there's not the same kind of longevity and so i wanted to get into producing and i i have uh, many ideas, but my favorite of them over the past few years has been the the ride that got away. I created it and raised the money to produce it, was able to execute it. It took a few years <laughs> to pull all that together, but was able to execute it. And the show um, aired last year uh, and it was, it received great ratings, very good stellar ratings and reviews. Yeah. And we had a blast doing it. And we've made a lot of changes for the better for season two. We're not shooting on the West Coast anymore in California. We're now on the East Coast. We'll save the other news for later. But so it was it was a big job to get that underway. And that's why you maybe didn't see me as much. Yep. And I also have a five-year-old daughter. <laughs> I <laughs> very much love her. You know, becoming a mom's a big thing. And you were saying, and you became a mom. You also <laughs> you, you also got married too. I also so. got married. So we got married in Italy. We've been together for many years, but we, we finally tied the knot. We had the time and our schedules to do it. And so life has been full, but getting the ride that got away off the ground was a big undertaking. I'm really pleased with the success of it and I can't wait for season two. And so that's been, been a lot, you know, just juggling that and, and my daughter Holland and, and Jay, that's a big job in itself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I think all our, better haves would say the same about us is that I, I, I know I'm a handful. <laughs> so. 
Yeah, we're just we're just children. We're children in aging and wrinkling bodies. I have basically. two That's of them. <laughs> maybe more in the future. I don't know. But so yeah, life has been full and exciting, and um, and I'm really looking forward to what's ahead. Ah, I forgot what my follow up question was. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to step in and, and take her back a little bit, or do you want to you keep going down the the lines you're you're going down, John? Because I have I have racetrack questions and and childhood questions. Yes. Oh, you do. Sean's been a racer since he was knee high to a grasshopper, as some of us say. Right. And, uh, I'm pretty sure I had a I'm pretty sure I had a go kart in the in the oh, womb. No. You pretty, might have actually yeah. beat him though, because. Um, <laughs> And I think the racetrack came into your life about the same time you might have actually been, excuse me, but conceived. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I started racing the year you were so, born. What? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been a day or two. Um, but yeah, I just, growing up in the house that you grew up in, Mr. 20 plus SCCA championships and 27. taking on, I know it's crazy. It's, that's an insane amount of championships growing up at the track with your dad and in the, in the family, was it always cars and racing all the time from literally like the time you first have memories? You know what it was? It was like, like fun all the time. We had so much that's fun. Perfect. We were always like, it was not just race cars or racing. It was boats and go-karts and motorcycles and mopeds and three wheelers and four wheelers. And like my house was the one to be at period. End of story. <laughs> And we welcome. I can totally relate. Yeah, it's that's awesome. That's the way to grow up, and it was a dream come true. And and we would always be in our family motorhome, driving from racetrack to racetrack. And then when we would get to the destination, it was like open the garage, and there was every toy imaginable. And so you know we're, we've all we all have like the love for cars running through our veins. And so so yeah, that's been a, a part of my life since the day I was born, but not in a way that was serious. Not in a way that. Like my dad's not like a serious, he was serious about racing, but he's not like a serious guy. We had fun. And so I have only the best memories of my childhood. And, and I think that's why I just wanted to carry on this love of cars and, and keep doing things that's in awesome. the automotive arena. I'm assuming that upbringing around motorsports and I want to say the men in motorsports and being surrounded by them and that it just kind of was natural. It never seemed odd for you when you finally stepped in and you know went went to you know overhauling was your i guess big break show or your first foray into big tv and becoming as um i think one of the late night talk shows joked with you about is being a mechanic and so it just was natural for you there was none of that i think apprehension that a, a lot of i want to say some of the women that get into the tv is do you i guess you believe that's true or you had the you had the background to back it up, basically. That's that's the cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like right off the bat, I would say that there were some people, like there was the naysayers and the chauvinists and the people who, but it it was short lived. As soon as they did a little research or figured out that I come from that world and that I had been immersed in in everything automotive since the day I was born, I think it they quickly learned that. I mean, I don't pretend to know even like a fraction of everything there is to know, but I know that I love cars and I grew up with them and I. I do have some knowledge and I've just had a blast like driving cars and being around them and watching the mechanics and my dad in the garage and, and the fabricators. And then along the way, working with people like Chip Poos and Troy Trepanier and, and many of the greatest. And how does it tie back to your question? Tell me your question one more time, John. You're getting right there is that it wasn't odd. It wasn't, it wasn't a different dynamic you had to learn. You just, you know, you grew up around it. So it was just kind of natural except we started to film it and put it on TV. Yeah, and I think, again, like, and so at the start, some people were, were naysayers and they maybe didn't believe that a woman, was, it's, just, it's just so chauvinistic. It's so, like, 18 <laughs> I'm glad we quickly steered away from that. Yeah, we, I, in our house, my wife works in the uh, vehicle repair side of the automotive industry, and she has nice. for 20 plus years. And nice. she, we see the same thing. It's literally, she goes into a shop and they're like, oh my God. And as soon as she starts talking, they realize, oh, she knows more than we do. <laughs> and it's, and it's, I love it. it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I don't understand because I have known Natasha for more than half my life, basically. And I've been around so many women in the automotive realm that it's, it's never dawned on, or it's, it's never been in my vocabulary to go like, well, why are you here? It's literally like, 
if you mm-hmm. can point at a 67 Camaro and go, Hey, that's a 67 Camaro. And you, you know, you know what you're talking about. You just like, it's mm-hmm. why does you, why I, I don't understand the treating either gender differently in that realm. And I, I know it's a thing, but I just never, I've never gotten it. I, I think it's just because it was always a man's, it, it was like the way that men escaped. They went to the garage to have their outlet away from women and family. And so it was it, it was a stereotype that lived on for a very long time. And I'm happy that women have, you know, over the last many decades been penetrating that. And I think it's really cool that more and more women care about cars and what they're driving and they're working on cars and designing them and taking jobs in all facets of the automotive uh, world and- yeah, getting involved in the in the technical side and um, yeah, when I was with SRT one of the transmission calibration specialists with SRT was a young lady who had she'd gotten uh, an internship and she was only supposed to be there for six months and ended up being with SRT for several years and she's like responsible for calibrating the ZF8 speeds in all of the SRT vehicles from 2014 to 2017 or something like that. And, and you go to no. Chelsea Proving Grounds for events and, and she's there and answering all your questions about latency and shifts and how your house, you know, how the throttles cutting in and out for downshifts and upshifts and what she's doing okay. with. Uh, yeah. It's just why I just, just That's do it if you love it. Yeah, yeah. it totally should be really cool stuff. I, I think now though, men, I mean, correct correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like men find it to be sexy and very, uh, and they're supportive women in the automotive. I married, I I married one. <laughs> yeah, literally, that's cool. I'm literally, and, not, and the crazy it? thing is she was my boss. <laughs> she, wow. Yeah. Now that's a confident man. Yes. I love it. She was my boss. And, and yeah, something else you see is women actually owning companies in this industry, you know, which is, mm-hmm. which is pretty awesome. I, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a lady that owns Magnuson superchargers now. Yeah. Yeah. Carmen, Carmen from AM hot rod glass, you know, she builds glass for hot rods and Bonneville cars. And I think it's pretty awesome seeing that Courtney, you're, you've got to be one of kind of the pioneers for that. And I think John's got a question that may even be your predecessor to this. I don't know. We'll let John ask this question and see. I'm not sure what the question. All right. All right. Well, I'll ask it for you then. Because I, I have a question and I might be stuck on that question or a statement. So, so go ahead. You, you, you ask my right, question. So the first event that was held at your dad's drag strip, Brainerd. Oh, yeah. Uh, the winner. Not not the first. Okay. The first national the, event, I, I, right? I know, uh, no, I know the question All right, well, you now. you ask it. And this, this I came up in the, uh, back in 1983, I believe it was, the inaugural Quaker State North Star NHRA Nationals was held. And Shirley Modowney was one of the three winners that year. You know, you were young at the yeah. time. We won't, you know. <laughs> I remember it. Get on uh, Wikipedia and you, you can do the math. But <laughs> uh, did that have an impact on you? Did that? Was it neat to see, you know, she was a pioneer, obviously, in oh. racing, you know, her and Lynn St. James and women like that. But was that an impact? Was is that a very memorable event for you? Or? For sure. A hundred percent. And I, re- I remember that race. I remember that time very well. And I was totally inspired by Shirley Muldowney and uh, the other female racers. And then she had a really bad crash. Yeah. Remember that, too. And everybody just being so supportive and concerns and people donating money and we had these like buckets of and you could just put money to to like give towards her medical bills and everything but I was very inspired by her I think all of the pioneers in every form of or or every facet of the automotive space are incredible and I, I always say if I can even inspire one person one young person or one woman or anybody that makes me incredibly happy and so just to be a, a part of that like movement if you will or just be, being a part of inspiring people means a lot well you've obviously made that happen there's, there's no doubt about that and it's one of the things the podcast has been about a, a one of our earliest and might have been our first guest and she's a local autocrosser uh, runs nationals and is was a two or three time consecutive champion while she was studying to become a doctor or get her doctorate in veterinary science you know she's a, a veterinarian now 
she does these national autocrosses and now she's training to do an event in the olympics she tried out for the 2022 olympics and now it's whatever um i think for 2020 you know it's it it, she's busier than i can even think of being busy (laughs) i support it it's one of those things we try to portray is that you know this hobby shouldn't be sexist and that i even listen i even listen to a podcast called Femcanic Garage, and it's a female, and she interviews female shop owners and influential women that, you know, just the small, the small little shops, you know, that we never hear of these people. Very supportive of, you know, what you've done, and yes, you're a very attractive woman, but, you know, attractive women laid on the mini trucks that I looked at in my trucking magazines and always (laughs) always blocked the detail I wanted to see. Uh, You're one of the first that portrayed herself as like you said, you, you knew a lot, but you admit when you don't know it. And it really, I've always had a lot of respect for you in the industry for that. Thank you. for uh, You know, the, the, tel- the television world is fairly honest about everything. And, you know, you are, are knowledgeable or you're kind of like me. You, you know a lot about everything. I'm always learning and I always want to learn. And when I was working on Overholland with Chip Poos and all of those amazing people, I was constantly just like a sponge soaking up whatever they could teach me or show me there are so many hours beyond what what anybody ever saw on tv we basically lived on set and it, it was it was amazing to be able to learn from some of the greatest did you get in there with a hammer and a dolly and, oh, totally. and go after it that's awesome with everything like i that's did cool. everything on the cars the only thing i never really tackled was wiring but outside of that i did as much as i could do and again always wanted to learn and i think it's important to always be curious and to to just constantly be like gaining knowledge and but thank you for saying that i appreciate it there's a funny scene in season one of <laughs> oh. the ride that got away and i can't i can't remember which car it was but it smelled horrendous the mustang. all right it was the mustang yeah. Dude, Courtney's in there. Milk, milk Dude, under the carpet. She's, what was she's it? giving her hail. She's right in the middle of it, ripping the carpet up. And, it was bad. And I'm like, it was so bad. Girl, get it, you know. No, so Do you have a bad. I should too? have. No, I was actually wearing leather pants because we had come from. Like I would go out and do these oh interviews God. and then I'd come back to the garage and work on the cars. And so I just come back from an interview and I had been wearing black leather pants and I just put a tank top on and dove in and I didn't know the car was going to be that bad. And as Will was saying, it was absolutely disgusting. It smelled like rotten cheese, like sour milk, baking in the desert for a hundred years. That's milk under like, the carpet. Oh. If milk gets under the carpet, it's done done forever Ooh, yeah it was brutal we were holding our breath and then and then as you would rip out the carpeting or rip out the interior dust is flying in your face and you're just inhaling all of this i mean it was toxic but you know what <laughs> so you're literally because of that you're immune to what's going on <laughs> probably oh, i probably got coronavirus from that car yeah it's perfect well i got it over with <laughs> You had COVID-24. Totally. <laughs> like you're, but that's part you're of the deal, totally you know? Gone. We're like taking these cars that are, we, we go after the original car, but when we can't find it, we get the same year make and model. And so we find these cars in barns or junkyards or wherever. They're often in really bad shape. And so that car had not been cared for in many, many years, decades. And apparently the owner had some really crazy stories. Like she had been through uh, a, lo- a lot. And so I think she, who knows? I think she was living out of the car. And she definitely neglected it. But, but yeah, Will, that's part of it. We just dive in there and take care of it, and then we make it beautiful. That's right. Are we far enough in to, to go into the whole, yeah, Will? <laughs> well, we're going to. I'm going to lead into that, Sean. This came up. Will was very quiet about what was happening in this show. And then on the topic list one day, I put on our Trello board, you know, let's talk about the one that got away and the question was what are you, what are you talking about and well let's decide figure out the one car in our lives that we wanted we didn't necessarily have to own but the one car that got away what was yours john the one that i stick out the most and remember the most uh would have been the first pickup i ever wanted to buy and this would have been my i guess second car and it was an 84 azuzu pup my dad hey, and Courtney, I went and looked at Courtney, it i really john, wanted it john's a little weird <laughs> all right <Yeah. laughs> You can literally go with anything. <laughs> the sky was the limit. You can. Uh, yeah. I wanted a Bugatti EV110, but John goes with an 84 Isuzu. I love pump. it. 
But that's that that's exactly it though is it was supposed to be my first truck and when we went to buy it it literally was driving off the lot because somebody had beat us there by a couple hours uh you know after my dad had decided oh we'll go ahead and let him trade his car or, or I'll go ahead and buy him this because he's crashed this car oh too many God. times <laughs> so yeah that, as crazy as it is that is it and for those that follow me on Facebook, it's the car I always put down is the car I've never owned. There's nine that I own. I love the, it. I that's love the it. one that. You know what? I always say like every car, every single car is special in its own way. And every car is appreciated by, they're like people. There's something right. for everyone. And I love that these unique cars like that, John, are, are appreciated. And, and so like, I never bag on any, like even if it's the wackiest car, or the, the worst paint job or the worst, what, you know, like, well, do you feel that way too? That like you can appreciate people's passion and. Oh, I, I, there's something on every car that has ever been made that I can find that I like. Yeah. Something about it. Yeah. I may not like the whole picture. It, it may be a knob on the dash. I will find something that I dig on every car that's ever been made. I love it. I can even find something to, to like on a stanced car. And that's not easy. <laughs> It's not easy, but you know, did, you, know, just, like, did you just go uh, there with the word stance? <laughs> really? Sean, it, it's been nice having Sean yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> Sean, wow. just, don't, just don't go there with the word restomod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, can I go? I won't go there with restomod, and I want a pro touring car. So <laughs> Will's, Will's my guy. So. <laughs> Well, well <laughs> the car that got away from me is what the car that I want to take to Will and get him to What's turn that? into a pro Which one? car. Uh, 70 GTS. Oh, I love that car so much. I actually love the 69 the best, but there's subtle. I ended up with a 69 Camaro was my first car, but we looked at a 70 GTX like two weeks before and went back to buy it. And kind of the same thing as John's is Susan Pop. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was, it was there and we went back to get it and it was gone. And oh. It was, it was a 440 car. It was sublime. Oh. It was, it was a four speed. It was. For it, some reason, she's more emotional about your oh, GTX. I, love, than I wonder car. why. <laughs> I love that car. It's one of my favorites. I came to Mopar later in life. Like I, the whole SRT thing didn't happen for me until 2011. Um, when I got involved with that brand and, I was almost a Mopar guy from the time I was 13 years old and I would have been like, I, I would have, this is a, this is a, this is a good segue. Do you have any brand loyalty? Or are you literally like, I just love. I always say I do not discriminate when it comes to American classics. I, I don't discriminate. I love them all. Like people say, what's your favorite car? It really depends on the mood. It depends on the moment. It depends where we're going. It depends on the year. My 57 Thunderbird has my heart and it's not a powerful car although I, i've debated putting a coyote or something under the hood <laughs> god bless you i was going to ask you about that car oh i love that car you showed that on car cast back in 2012 or something yeah. with corolla and deandria and adam said for you not yeah. to paint that he, he car and that's a that's a question that Derek, who's very big into preservation would love to know the answer to i think is it? Did you ever repaint it, or is it still in that? It's patina? all original, and it sat in an old lady's. Uh, old lady. Um, oh, there she oh, is. Oh, there she is. She's on a bike right back. Um, I see a helmet. Bike, Come say hi really fast, baby. It sat in someone's garage for fifty years, and then when when I got a hold of it, and oh it, it was God. my ultimate dream classic. And and one night I was just surfing online, and I'm like, you know what? I work really hard, and I want to buy my dream classic car. And so I ended up say hi to the guy, Colin. Holland, lean in and say hi. Hi. Hey. Hey. Holland, what's your favorite car? What's your favorite car? She's a car girl. She is. Wait, wait. Let me guess. Let me guess. Is it um the Charger or the Maserati? Charger. <laughs> or is it a Good Hellcat? Girl. Mustang? Hellcat? Yeah, Hellcat. Hellcat? I want to do something. No, 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 Holland, you can't, you can't, you can't. I really can't. I don't, no, no, you can't, you can't, baby. No, baby, I'm going to do a back run like he did. Oh. <laughs> she wants to do a back run. I do oh. it. I want okay, to. Okay, can she do a back run real fast? Holland, do it fast, fast, fast. Um, is it a Holland Camaro or Mustang? Mommy, I can't. Oh, here. Okay, hold on. I'm about it. Fast, 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 because we're doing a podcast. Okay. Fast, fast, fast. Bridge. This is... This is oh, podcast yeah. gold. There you go. I don't know, no background. 
<laughs> no background. <laughs> Yeah. We have to go with background. Wait, Man, you went from one coast to the other. <laughs> That's fast. Well, it, I'm, I'm doing it a little bit. Oh This is what I, you guys. This is this is my work day. This is my life as a mom and a homeschooling parent. Um. This is my life. Will knows it well. Yeah. <laughs> the homeschooling thing, I we don't have kids. Like my wife is we have two greyhounds, four cats, and she has me. That's we're yeah. More power to you. God you bless what, you. I have all the respect in the world. I always did, but more than ever for teachers, stay at home moms, parents who homeschool, stay at home dads, and housekeepers. <laughs> 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 it's a lot of work and it's never ending like I, i've never done more laundry in my life i'm like we're just a family of three like i can't imagine these bigger families i feel like i'm always doing laundry every second of the day laundry and dishes laundry and dishes and cooking is fun and now they want you they want you to run your dishwasher every oh, night now have you seen gosh. those commercials they I, don't have to well, they I, don't I, have I, to tell me we them. run it twice a day <laughs> oh we do twice a day I'm like every night we do it twice a day too your dish when you cook when you yeah when you cook so are we but you still. cook three meals a day mm -hmm. or just say two meals a day for four people i mean i'm not i'm not going and buying paper plates yeah i like i like eating off of a real plate i have yeah. a dishwasher i was, run it i was about to introduce you to the joys of Paper nope. and styrofoam. No, like I like I like real plates. Nope. I think we just cook with a lot of dishes and a oh, lot of yeah. spatulas and whatever. And I'm super uh, like a clean freak where I don't want any anything contaminated. And if I'm cooking with like raw meat and then what? So it's like everything is constantly going into the sink. And then it just seems like we're overflowing with dishes constantly, laundry and anyway, you guys. Yeah, I'm I'm a cross between you two. When I moved in, everybody here used paper plates and plasticware, and it drove me crazy. Now I've probably spent as much on dishwasher detergent as I did plasticware, and I cook like that. Since I've already ruined any credibility with you, see, my <laughs> perfect kitchen always had three dishwashers in it. You had the breakfast dishwasher, the lunch dishwasher, and the there dinner dishwasher, and you just took everything out, you loaded it, and you ran it. Didn't matter if you used it or not. Every meal had its own dishwasher, and you oh. might throw a fourth in for snacks. So <laughs> you could just like you don't even need you don't need counters at that point or cabinets at that point. Exactly, you literally <laughs> just pull out of one dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, you use your it. dishwasher is your cabinet. You just rotate. Totally. You just rotate. Love it. Yeah, and the will the way Will cooks, you can, you're a serious chef over there. I like cooking. What'd you cook tonight? Me too. Oh, I didn't cook tonight. We rode go karts till dark. <laughs> Why? Sean's been Sean's been live streaming his cooking what? tonight. Yeah, normally I cook like really good stuff. Tonight we Ooh, went. Oh yeah, we did too. We did too. Uh, that's what we had was pizza. You guys, we had. It was not delivery. It was DiGiorno. This was delivered from Atlanta. Jay went to school in Atlanta. Oh and my it's god! This, it's this place that sends you pizzas on ice. And they overnight what? eat pizzas, and they are like to die for. And I put a okay. That's vehicular because they had to use vehicles to get you get the delivery from Atlanta to where you are. Business. Um, holy that's crap! Right. Hopefully, she didn't buy well, two pizzas because they would have come in two boxes. I think I, I think they were delivered a while ago, but uh, but we but that's we froze awesome. them, and then we enjoyed one tonight after having some stone crab. It was an amazing, mm -hmm. like easy mm -hmm. dinner, and we did not have a lot of dishes with that one, but it was. Incredible. Oh, stone crab. And a little 1940 you had me stone crab. Yeah. <laughs> Life is good. A sun mm. Sunday was when I cooked 10 Cornish hens. That's what I was talking Yeah. Yep. Mac and That's cheese. That's what I was talking about. You sent me the picture. And yep. I was like, oh my God. Ma Mac and cheese with all the aged cheddar and Asiago and, and uh, homemade uh, smashed taters. Nice. You went straight up. Well, now oh, now we really off. have to get to the announcement because what <laughs> Will just talked about probably explains the reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yes, 
<laughs> He's going to be cooking for us a lot going forward, I hope. That's perfect. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Is yes. One of you go ahead and tell everybody why we were fortunate enough to get Courtney, and hopefully it means we can have her back a couple more it. times. Or <laughs> When we decided to bring the show from California to the East Coast, the city that brings me closest to where I am now on this side of the country is Atlanta. Um, it's just easy to get in, in and out of. I, of course, was been a big fan of Wills for many years, and, and I thought, like, oh, what a perfect opportunity if we could get him to be the lead designer and, and main character alongside me and the team on the ride that got away season two and hopefully going forward from there. And so um, I gave Will a call and I was just crossing my fingers that he would be interested. It took a minute to get him on board. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had to check his podcast contract to see if it allowed him to do other things. He's got a lot going on. He's building a lot of cars and he's got, you know, multiple team of projects constantly. And, and uh, a lot of gigs around the country, and he's always, you know, touring the the car show circuit. He's he's busy, and he's in demand, and and so I was wondering, are we are we going to be able to make this happen? And sure enough, we did. And so Will is the new designer and uh, lead character on the ride that got away, and I couldn't be more thrilled about it. Whoop, so, yes. <laughs> so yep, he'll happy. be leaving the podcast world. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh. I actually, I think Courtney's been fortunate enough. It, it is her show, and he, I, according to Will, he's going to continue well, no, to be able to still I'll, do this. I'll let, sure. I'll let everybody know one of the huge deciding factors for me was when somebody like Courtney gives you a call <laughs> and she's t- telling me all about the show, which I, I knew a little bit about it. It's her show. It's not some production companies. It's not somebody you've never heard of it's courtney hansen show okay she dude she has she works her she's the hardest working girl in the industry (laughs) i mean she funded season one she done it all herself and you know you know it's gonna happen it's just one of those we've turned down multiple shows but when courtney called and told me how it was all gonna work i'm like you know this is my opportunity We've definitely learned a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes uh, just through Will, Courtney, and knowing how, or not knowing everything, obviously, about how season one came together, but we have gotten a little bit of insight into how it came together, and knowing what you have jumped through in order to make it happen, that had to be a deciding factor for you, Will, knowing the dedication that she put into this project, and knowing... You, you don't do that unless you're 100% all in, unbelievably passionate Without about something. And it's it's really well, cool to see, I, man. It's, I, it's, I give Courtney a hard, hard time. I call her the modern-day Linda Vaughn. No. You know? And, no. I mean, that's 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 who you are. And if, if you mention the car hobby and you mention a female, it's the first person that pops in your head. If you're our age... It's, it's it's Courtney. You know, if you're if you're my dad's age, it's it's Linda Vaughn. I never put that together, but she definitely fills right. that role. And and it's kind of it's kind of funny. I, Courtney knows this better than I do, but because her and Linda are, are, are friends, for some for some reason, Linda Vaughn loves my dad, and I didn't even knew they met. She told me she's like, I love his, I love his daddy. Check this out, you guys. As you're talking about that, look what I have right here. Look at that. Nice. <laughs> there you she's go. Nice. I think I met her at SEMA like 18 years yep. ago. She's amazing. She still Very goes. Cool. She's still yeah. Cool. It's crazy. Look at that. And then there's, uh, let's see, where's my page? We've got a whole page in here together. So do, you, do we need to get you a Hearstol? Look at oh, that. Oh, I love a Hearstol. But she's she's a legend <laughs> and she's a very dear friend. She's like family to me. And we, we used to tour around and do appearances for oops um for we used to do appearances across the country and and canada for uh gm we just became dear friends and we check in regularly every week and she's just awesome and she's a huge inspiration as well and i'm happy she's nonstop. she's absolutely not like if she could bottle some of her energy and drive that's a trillion dollar industry right there like i i 
it's she's got to be she's an inspiration remarkable. to to absolutely millions and of she, people. And she and she her like one of her greatest gifts is that she remembers everyone's name. And so I think that's so cool that she, she'll like she'll remember like everybody's name when they're coming up to say hello to her at car shows. Like that's such wow. a that's an art form right there. That's a gift. That is a gift. That is a gift. That's I, yeah. You I can't call learn it, that. I, <laughs> I called it the Chip Foose gift. I'm going to change and call it the Linda Vaughn gift. <laughs> Because Linda had it before too, Chip. Right? And talk about another one who we're inspired by, who means the world to me and is just such an extraordinary guy. I watched that show religiously, absolutely religiously. Like I watched it to the point where I was like, I'm not worthy of having any car on that show, but I really want one <laughs> on that show so bad. Like I kept going because I had this stupid car that no one cares about. And I'm like, okay, it's so rare. Maybe they'll care enough about it to, to do John? something with it. It's not an 84 Isuzu, but you know. <laughs> well, yeah. And Will, what you were saying is true. There were a lot of serious challenges along the way. We made it through and now we are on the other side of it. And I'm so excited to take the best elements, at, like everything that worked and make it even better and everything that didn't work so great, leave it aside and just knock it out of the park with season two. I can't wait. I'm so honored you're on board. Well, me too. We, there, it's, a, it's, a, it's a killer setting where it's going to be done at. It's going to be a fun ride and Yay. it's going to be exciting. We can't wait to be able to talk more about what's how it's coming together like we, we literally like are just so proud to, to, to well, be you sitting just, here right you just now don't and, have to and, wait there big boy yeah. i know i know if you uh, would have asked me 22 years ago when i met will and him <laughs> and his, uh, uh, oh here we go his his uh air ride uh blazer the first year <laughs> which then became an air ride impala and college student that you know only went to mcpherson because it was a college and his dad wanted him to go to college, but he could learn hot rods or Perfect. learn how right. to pretend Perfect. to work on hot rods. But no, it's, it's kind of interesting. I would have never put Will to get to where he was five, 10 years ago, you know, would have never pictured grade eight contender, you know, his legendary dart and some of the stuff he builds. I've just, you know, I'm, I've been proud for years to say he's a friend and, it's one of the reasons I asked him to be on the podcast is because he's known and he he's an up and comer. I always oh, felt in his industry. And I, obviously I called that right three years ago because you came calling three years later. No, well, he, he is on his way to the, the highest places. And well, I'm just so excited that you're part of the team and we have a really cool team, a very diverse team of guys. And, and we're, we will bring on another woman as well. Like we, we don't discriminate there either. So far, we have, have an amazing lineup of, of guys from all over the country, actually. And everyone has a different specialty and look. I don't know if you can say you're more than welcome to introduce anybody you want or talk about who's supporting you if you have, you know, oh, yeah, sponsors yeah, yeah. or if it's all, you know, you know we, we spent the first half learning about Courtney. Now let's learn about the show and figure out when hopefully we'll be able to tune in i know the dates don't exist yet because of what we're going through but. uh we're hoping that by the fall we'll be airing in the fall that's the goal and we hope that we can get back to work soon here like end of may or early june and as far as the team we've got a just an awesome cast of, of people actually on both sides of the camera the cast and crew are are amazing and then um our sponsors are Haggerty's and Castrol and Continental Tire and Optima and Kicker and Magnaflow. We just could not be more excited about our, our lineup of of uh of companies that are, are supporting us and what we're doing. And we're making dreams come true for deserving people. Those who don't know the show, we are hunting down the the dream ride, the car truck that that got away from a deserving person. They had to sell it when they came on hard times in life. And uh, they give back to society, uh, veterans, people who give back to their communities, people who have been selfless and have just really been challenged by life and, and had to let go of their dream ride. We're either finding that exact car or the same year make and model, and we make it into the work of art that they always imagined having. And then we give it to them in a complete surprise reveal. And so it's very special and super emotional. And it's also funny. It's a lot of fun. And you can catch season one on Amazon Prime. And again, we're going to make season two even better. And, and the stories are so just, they're heartwarming and beautiful. And so we, we look forward to bringing that to you very soon, hopefully by the fall. Go, 
go ahead before you watch season one and just go ahead and get you a box of Kleenexes <laughs> and put them next to you because I'm, I'm telling you, they'll they'll jerk a totally. tear out of you. Just pretty much every one of them will jerk jerk a tear, totally. tear out of you. They do. And uh, and this is totally why I said I just didn't feel like I was worthy enough to get. It. <laughs> it's, I mean, the situations are definitely it's heartbreaking and heartwarming yeah. all at the same time. Yeah, think and, think of all the yeah, cars that. Think of all the cars that got lost in Katrina mm-hmm. and, you know, or I mean, fires and, uh, or, yeah, or, like all of it. People lost their cars in, in horrible situations. People had cars stolen. Um, and then, and then they had to sell cars to put a roof over their family's heads. And each one is different. Each story is completely unique. Each car is completely different. And the people are all really special. And, uh, it's just, it's beautiful. So I'm, I'm honored to do it. And I'm so excited about our team and we can't wait to bring you new episodes, hopefully starting in October, 2020. Awesome. We can't wait to see it. And you get to take all of those up and coming companies and introduce them. to <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the sponsor list is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and to have those folks on your side, I mean, that, that speaks volumes to yourself, obviously for being able to go out and, and put that together um, but it also speaks, I think, to the, the quality of what we are going to see coming out of, of this show. It's, it's going to yeah. be absolutely amazing. Those folks and through Haggerty's Drive Share program, we are going to be driving a lot of different vehicles, like classic cars, sports cars, late model uh, trucks, all of it through Haggerty's Drive Share program. So you're going to get to see a lot of cool vehicles throughout the series as well. Just every element is going to be captivating eye candy for us gearheads but it's not even just gearheads like this this is a show for the whole family and it transcends automotive it's gonna be killer can y'all believe that i'm on a family show <laughs> i mean <laughs> well, well we do they they our show kid friendly so. <laughs> things have happened and will your, your family's gonna come and hang with us absolutely absolutely with my wife, a stay-at-home mom now, days that we're on set, if they're long weekends, they'll come over and hang out with Courtney and Holland. And, and Holland. Um, I know, I know Jay's a super busy dude, so I'm sure he may be coming in some. And it's going to be a very family-friendly show, family-friendly set. I'm just stoked beyond words to be a part of it and Courtney to ask me to, to have a role in it and... Not you almost just, said no, didn't you? Almost said uh, no. It, yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, it, it. He told me about it, and it took him probably what Courtney probably knows two months to sign the contract yeah. and get it back. And I think he told me about it the yeah, day he it, got it, the offer. It, but it, it was a lot to consider. I mean, because it basically puts me working seven days a week, hardcore seven days a week but you know what will it's so worth it and then once once oh. the season's over you'll be like ah oh, you can take a deep right. breath and then you'll be really excited to get back to it for season three <laughs> well i and and that's that's the way i feel about it too i generally work seven days a week anyway i'm, I'm either at the shop working i'm at home working or that that's it most time i'm at the shop especially now since tammy stays at home she pretty well takes care of everything but vacuuming out the pool i still have to do that but, <laughs> you know that's fine and you do the fancy cooking too yeah which i enjoy that you know so <laughs> the seven day a week thing though is easy to do when you love what you do and i don't think there's right. anyone in any of these windows on this right. podcast right now that don't absolutely love what we do we get 100%. to right. literally 100%. we're parts of industries that we would we wouldn't trade for anything and, and that's so true we're pretty fortunate to get to do what we do i've got a crew at the shop right now that's just uh unbelievable the, the best crew i've ever had and i feel comfortable if i do have to leave and go to atlanta for a few days i i, I don't feel you know i feel very comfortable with that my dad lucky he is still in really good shape for his age and can pop in and out of the shop when he needs to. You know, it, it was almost like the time. And when I really dissected everything, it was like, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen right now. It's going to happen. And what, what better person to ask you to do it with than, than Courtney? So. Oh, Will, I'm so excited. 
and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I think you're going to be happy that you signed on to do it, and we're going to have a blast. And we're making dreams come true for the kindest right. people who really deserve it. So it's special. We made you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> uh, hopefully. Oh, yeah. And then we got held up a little bit. And we got oh, yeah, up. this freaking virus crap. Didn't we all? <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't we all? Meeting the guys that are we're, that are we're going to be working beside. They're all cool, legit dudes. They're such good dudes. We're really blessed to have this team, all the people that sign on. And Will, you pretty much know all of them, right? They're all coming through you for the most part. Well, yeah, a lot of them. Um, have, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess so. I guess all of them now, right? <laughs> <laughs> See, that, um, that's how enjoyable the job is. Will doesn't even realize he's working. Will, like, but, you know, we could do castings and all that, but why don't we bring on people that, who you know and respect who you've maybe worked right. with? And a couple of them are new, but many of them you've, you've known and worked with before. And One of them actually has a, uh, a grade eight from Detroit under his belt, too. I mean, we're talking legit people. And actually, we could use we could use one more, couldn't we, Courtney? Maybe a female oh, yeah, on yeah, the yeah, build yeah. team, or yes, yeah. we need another one. So we, yep. we need someone with maybe we've got all these southern gentlemen. <laughs> so we we've got all these white dudes. So we might need we need to mix it up a little bit. We need different. How about a, a a really funny woman who's been in the automotive repair industry for twenty plus years? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> she would kill it. We like maybe somebody I don't know just just not another white dude from the south. <laughs> right, right. We cannot discriminate. My wife's British. She's British. She can't get any more not from here. Nice. I can't <laughs> wait to meet her. I hope to meet her. Can't wait for you to meet her. She's you guys need to come visit. Lovely. Come yeah. and hang with us. Help us with the cross. We're on the way. I, I have to ask a question before we wrap this up. And yeah. I ask I try to ask this of everyone that we have on the show that when I'm around. You mentioned the fifty seven T Bird. What's currently in your garage that you absolutely love? A 70Z28 that we're going to trick out. We're going to have some fun with it. Will Will's probably going to help, help me out with that when there's a little time. And, you know, we need a baby-friendly car, so I have a supercharged, it had supercharged Range Rover Sport. And I have a 70 Mach 1 that I got from DJ Funk Master Flex, and I'm oh excited to at some point um, trick that one out. The T-Bird is going to stay original. I just love that baby. Adam Kroll is right. I'm not going to paint it. I'm just going to keep her the, the way she is. She's perfect. That's um, amazing. I might soup it up a little under the hood, <laughs> but outside of that, but this is a cruising car, right? So it's like, it's perfect. And then I have uh, an Aston Martin DB9, late model sports car. Yeah. Had to do it. Had to do it. <laughs> that is it. I mean, we have an old Jaguar that Jay has. And then I really need it to add a Mopar to the mix. I literally asked for one, and you're like, <laughs> 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 it, was, it was like, I love them all. It's, it's, that's awesome. I'm a lover of cars, but I, so I have my eye on a 68 Charger and a 69 GTX. Oh my God. So those are yeah, we're, one of those. It makes me really happy because I have to round out the, and then I, I love the 67 GTO convertible as well. Holy crap. We're going to make the Camaro the baddest one of them all, though. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. Pro Tour? Be a gift for Jay. Yeah. Well, well, so I, I, I can't say nothing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you. I'll tell you later, Sean. I mean, I know, I know that the, that she threw out no more Southern guys on the show, but how about a Southern guy that's really good at melting tires? It's really like better no. than average at throwing. We've got one of those corner. already. <laughs> I can do a burnout as good as no, 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 no. I'm we, talking we, about like like properly g loading in corners and nothing. We don't need that. No. Oh, come on. We've got Courtney's dad. Hey, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> My dad's gonna definitely drive down from Maryland. Come on, <laughs> sit down. Yeah. You just play on your simulator. How dare you? We're gonna have so much fun <laughs> in that parking lot. We're gonna have so much fun. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, remember, Will tuned cars at the Corvette Museum in the parking lot. So. You did? Yeah. Uh, real quick story. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't believe I hadn't told you this. So we're, we're going to LS Fest, and we built the uh, Rocket Autocross Camaro. We literally finished it like two hours before we went to the dyno shop. I scheduled the, the dyno on our way to LS Fest. <laughs> So, finished the car. Well, it wasn't finished yet because the windshield wasn't in it. 
So we go and tune it, you know, on the dyno, get it ready, stop by a buddy of mine's shop, unload it out of the trailer, put the windshield in it, hang out with them for a little bit. And then Derek, our other host on the podcast, works at the Corvette Museum and actually helps run it. He don't just work there. And so he's like, Hey, yeah, you use the truck lot. Cause I was like, dude, we got to shake this car down. We, you know, totally. we literally, we, we hadn't even drove it other than on the dyno. So we get there and he's like, use the truck lot. So we're out there at two o'clock in the morning, just beating the guts out of this nice. car. We just finished tuning the suspension, just in brakes. I mean, just, and, and you know, we went out there and, uh, ran for the uh the grand championship at uh, ls fest so done right. done really really well for a car fresh off the jacks and, <laughs> for a car that was put together oh, or finished the day before how right fun right. that's awesome right what a blast that must have been so yeah it was it was fun let me ask one more question and then we'll go ahead and close up because we're right at that hour mark and you don't have to answer Uh-oh. because this might be a storyline What's the one that got I away for the, you, Courtney? I, I rocked the Z28 Camaro. <laughs> Four years. It was 90. Okay. I mean, that's the, the one that got, like, most of the cars that, like, they're either still in my life, weren't cool enough to have been the one that got away. <laughs> 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 but um, I feel like that, that would be a fun one to, like, trick out and see at some point. I'll probably buy it back and find, you know, or buy one back and then have some fun with it. That's mine. It's not, I guess. White. Black and gold? White, okay. It was white. The black and gold IROCs. I don't know what it was about the black and gold IROCs. Oh, yeah, that's cool. The blue. Yeah. But the blue, were... the dark blue? The blue. Yeah, my dad my dad had a dark blue uh, 84 high output Trans Am, five-speed, um, and it had that offset scoop on the hood, the offset ram air. The, the 305 water. high output. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's about like saying fast Mustang. <laughs> Oh, it, the Volvo wagon that he got after the Firebird was faster than the Firebird. But the Trans Am looked amazing. Yeah. Those are fun cars. My car was fast, and I got in trouble with it. I had fun with it. And it was that a is amazing. Yeah, we have an 84 Z28 race car right now. That, that oh, really? Is, yeah, it's just shockingly good. It is literally like there's nothing special about it. It's just like it's 84 Z28 Corvette brakes. Um Ooh crappy little tires like um the old c4 corvette brakes on it like and it's it you look at it and you're like it shouldn't be that quick and then you take it to somewhere like road atlanta and you're like laying down stupidly fast lap times yeah. and people are looking at you like what i don't know i the chassis exactly. is just it punches so far no no it's it the chassis is that good i mean it punches so far above its weight i totally understand your love of the i love the it body it's Wait, cool Will, 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 we need to know your ride that got away. Yeah. So An 84 when... is Suzu Pop. That's crazy. <laughs> but... I, I've been to, you've been to Will's shop. It's out back. No, no, there's one. never got away from Will. <laughs> there is one. When I was uh, 14 years old. All right. So when I was, when I was 14, I was in the shop all the time with my dad. And he goes, hey, I'm going to give you that. 57 Chevrolet two door 210 post out there. And my response was, I don't want that. I want a pickup truck. Guess what, Dad sold? The 57 210 oh, oh. two door post. So did he at least get you like a, a C10 short bed? Or something? I did get a 40 Ford pickup truck. So, okay. well, I know. mean, that car, I, I should have said, yeah, yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll take that. Oh, you your know. your dad is so. Your parents are the sweetest people. Yep. They're so amazing. So, That's a cool, yeah, they're, a cool story. They're good. Do you still they're have the Ford story. pickup? I do, and I actually still have my very first vehicle that was my own. Uh, it's a '84 two wheel drive uh, K5 Blazer, so a square body Blazer. And I, my daily driver now is a '96 two door two-wheel drive top so you that, need to drive these cars on the show too you need well, to bring, bring them to georgia my, my my 44 truck i've never built um i still have it but i haven't built it i've got it i've got to build my blazer back it's just 
you know, it's the way it was when I had it in high school. You know, it's just kind of rough. Motors pulled out of it. Courtney, I think we're talking about a season three or four. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've well, got I've got a uh, I've got a '68 Cadillac in my shop that I need to put the motor in and drive it. I've got a uh, a '91 Camaro. You know, Mike could work out a trade with Miss Courtney on here. Yeah, <laughs> you're a Chevy guy. You're a Chevy guy, though, right? Well, I wouldn't say I, I lean yes. Chevy say yes. more than anything. But no, I mean, I, I like Fords. I like, here's the thing I like all cars, but I'm a Dodge motor and a Dodge guy, a Ford motor and a Ford guy, and a Chevy motor and a Chevy I guy. I agree. My dad and I built a 65 Ford truck. It had a 460 and a five-speed. I mean, that's just how I am. I'm pro Ford from, you know, 27 to 48. And then from 49 to 60 or 73 or four, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a Chevy. That's just what I personally like and think looks good. So, But on the show, we're doing a little bit of everything and right, we're mixing it up. I'm I'm excited to work on everything. And you can tell, you can go look and see what Big Oak Garage has built. We've built them all. We've built Ford, Chevys, Mopars, um, even done some work on some 280Zs, stuff like that. So um, it doesn't matter to me. Will's even owned an Eclipse I in have, life, so it's not. I don't I believe have. actually. That's a cool car. <laughs> it was a turbo Eclipse. And was it, it the was GS, GSX? TSI. Yep. TSI. Yeah, this thing's crazy. I outrun a lot of Ford Mustangs in that thing. They don't see you coming. No. They, they, yeah. We, we, didn't, we didn't see you coming because I was a Ford Mustang guy yeah. when those things came out. I was a Fox body notchback freak back in the day. I'm sorry. I, dude, you can't beat those cars. <laughs> you can't beat those. those are they, were like working, cool cars. They, were, they were literally like working on lawnmowers. They were so easy to work on and they were so easy to find parts for. That's really what turned me on. To I wouldn't cars. mind doing a really cool Fox body. Yeah. I was going to say, I think those yeah. are so cool. You don't have to hide that. You literally just bring it on camera and just go. Just matter of fact, cheers. 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 Little Vino to end the night. Word. Courtney, before you take off, I just want to remind everybody to check out your website at CourtneyHanson.com. I know it's under construction. You're kind of revamping it. Uh, there is a link there to the season one of the ride that got away, the show without Will. Kind of where the idea started, where you got your traction. Uh, Will will join the show for season two. I'm sure the link will get updated and uh, some of the footage, once it begins being filmed, will be posted up there and we'll, we'll be able to see what's going on. We do thank you for spending time with us tonight. We do want to remind everybody to check out No Driving Gloves on Facebook. Uh, Instagrams are most active places. Uh, no Driving Gloves, both of those places. Check out NoDrivingGloves.com for history of the show, back episodes, anything like that. And be sure to uh, subscribe to us on either Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. And whatever podcast catcher you do use, go ahead and leave us a review there too. No podcaster really knows what the reviews do, but everybody asks you to give them, so they must do something. Uh, we'll figure that out eventually. Thank you again, Courtney. Uh, it's been great having you tonight, and uh, we look forward to speaking to you again. You guys are awesome. Thank you for having me on. And thank you for spending time with us, giving us the privilege of, I guess, kind of making the announcement. Yeah, well, I, I couldn't be more excited about it. And we, we'll have more news to come and more details about when it's all happening, hopefully ASAP. Now, hopefully this gets behind us pretty quickly and life can move on for everybody. And it's got to be driving you crazy because <laughs> the unknown. But we're almost through it. Yep, we are. Well, you guys, thank you. Say, I'm going to close it out, guys, and just kind of say good night and goodbye. Thanks, Courtney. Thanks for coming on, Courtney. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you All soon. Right. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Sounds good.